Okay. Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, we're gonna continue learning HTML today. We're on to day two. Uh, so let's get started. So I guess as a quick recap, last camp we learned about what HTML actually is. It's the language of the web. Uh, we learned about some basic elements and we uh, also learned a couple of other things. So this class, we're just gonna keep expanding. We're gonna hopefully learn some more HTML tags and get closer to building a, our dream web page. So we have the HTML doc type declaration to start off. So what is this? We were talking about it at uh, last camp. So an HTML doc type declaration, first of all, it's not a tag. Um, it's essentially a statement that tells the web browser what version of HTML on the page is being used from where there are other versions of HTML. <clears throat> Sorry, let me drink water quickly. So if you remember, there are other versions of HTML uh, and the latest version of HTML is HTML5. Um, so yeah, it just helps specify what version of HTML is being used. And for HTML5, the latest version, uh, this is what we have to put at the top of our code to signify that, uh, or to tell our web browser that we're using HTML5. Um, so yeah, once again, about this tag right here, if you, well, you wouldn't call it a tag, about this uh, block of code right here, you wanna put it even before your HTML tag, and it goes at the very, very, very top of your HTML document. Uh, so, Another reason just expanding on this is that some web browsers actually require you to have this tag in order for it to be uh, recognized properly and for it to display your content properly. So that's the HTML doc type declaration. Uh, sometimes on maybe on accident, you'll forget to add it and your web page will still work as intended, uh, but it's just really good practice to include it and you wanna make sure you always include it. Uh, so once again, HTML5 is the newest version of HTML. So uh, we're gonna talk about web browsers next. Uh, so a web browser is a software application used for accessing information on the internet. Um, so I don't think I need to explain it too much. I think they're too, they're kind of self-explanatory, uh, but I just kind of want to understand the, uh, I want to go more in depth about how they work and like uh, comparing them to something else. Cause we may have a few assumptions about web browsers that may not be true. Um, so yeah, we're all using the web browser right now to access this video, most likely, unless if you're using the YouTube app. Um, but yeah, so just some common ones, just to refresh, we have Chrome, Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge, and Safari. Uh, so personally, I use Firefox, but Chrome is very, very popular. I think it's the most popular one. Okay. So writing code. So you should be writing your code on a computer ideally. Um, and yeah, the reason for doing this is because it's a lot more efficient and computers or when I say computers, actually I mean like laptops or desktops, they're a lot more efficient for like multitasking and do multiple things at once. When we're writing our HTML code. We usually wanna have like a page with our web page in front of us and our code in front of us as well. And that uh, allows for more of an efficient experience. Um, laptops and desktops are just typically also faster than your phone or tablet. Um, and they have a dedicated keyword as well. And just, they're a lot more efficient for writing code. So you want to definitely be writing on like a proper computer. So uh, we're going to be adding some more tags uh, to our knowledge and expand with them and get better with them. Uh, so here are the tags we're mainly going to be learning today. So let me go back to that slide. First, we have unordered lists or the UL tag. Uh, next, we're going to be learning how to create our own lists with the li tag. Uh, we're going to bold text, so basically style text of it with the b tag. And we're also going to be learning about line breaks with the br tag. So before we go in and start writing it, let's uh, look at the background with these tags. So the ul and li tag. So I can group two students together because uh, they're very similar and they're used for the same thing pretty much. Um, so yeah. The UL tag defines an ordered bulleted list in HTML tag in HTML, and the LI tag defines a specific item within a list in HTML. Uh, so we have the opening and closing UL tags, and then in between that, we have our LI tags going in. Uh, so in an unordered list, uh, it's unordered, so it's not numbered from like one to however many items you have, and an ordered list would be what that is. So. Um, in this list, here's an example picture we're trying to compare it to the real world. Uh, so we have a recipe for pumpkin soup, it's just an image, and it has the ingredients, pumpkin, onion, garlic, chicken broth, and so on. Um, and then we can kind of replicate that with HTML if you want to make a list of that sort, like this. 
Uh, so opening UL tag, and then we have our opening and closing LI tag comes back and forth. And this is for each item we have on the list. So we have pumpkin here, pumpkin here, onion here, onion here, garlic here, garlic here. So that's all cool, but what's important to remember is that we're surrounding all of these within our opening and closing LI tags. We're not doing one big LI tag like this, but we're doing each individual opening and closing LI tag for each individual item on the list. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions throughout the thing, you can put questions in chat and I'll be sure to answer them. Sorry, I just have something in my eye, so I'm trying to get it out. Okay, so I think I'm better, so let's continue. So the B and BR tags. So the B tag defines a bolded style in HTML. Um, this, might be too, this might not be too clear on what it means right now, but we're gonna go and try it for ourselves and I think it'll be very self-explanatory. Um, and then next we have the BR tag, which defines a line break in HTML. Um, so remember last camp I was talking about, there are some tags that are exceptions to having the opening and closing tag. And the BR tag is actually one of these tags. So pretty much what a line break is, if you're not familiar with, um, it's pretty much like equivalent to like uh, pressing the return key on your keyboard, I guess you'd say. It pretty much breaks the line and it cuts that line and creates a new one afterwards. So it's actually breaking the line to start a new one, if that makes sense. So I have an example over here. Um, imagine this is like your text editor or your code playground and you wrote your code here. So first of all, we have our opening and closing P tags right starting right at the end. Um, and then in between here is actually what we care about. So we have some text. We have this as a text in your P tag. And we insert the BR tag like this. So just opening angle bracket, uh, B, R, and then closing angle bracket. Once again, we have no close tag. Um, and that's pretty much our tag like that. That's our element sitting right there. Uh, so that breaks the line and we can see it happen up here with the first text. So this is the text in your P tag and then we have the BR tag so it breaks it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, so yeah, this is the text in your P tag, uh, the BR tag, which breaks it. And then we have it happening again. So this is a text in your P tag. And then we have another BR tag, which breaks it. You can see that happening here as well. So this, it breaks and goes on to a new one. And then we have, this is text in your P tag, uh, B, break it again. And then now we have their final line, which has it again, but now it's surrounded by the B opening and closing tag. So we have opening angle bracket, B closing angle bracket. And then we have our content in it, so just text. And then we have our closing B tag. Remember that's for a bullet style. Uh, so what that looks like is what's down here. So these are all just normal P elements with their default styles on them. And then on the last line, we styled it with bold using that B element. Um, so the B tag can be used to just make things pop or stand out more than other tags. And yeah, so it does that by like increasing the weight of the font, I think it's called. And it um, darkens the colors and makes it the font thicker. And yeah. So we also want to talk about the comment tag today. So the comment tag is something you might be seeing used if you're following, uh, you might be seeing something like this if you're ever following tutorials, maybe online or you're, um, or maybe you're reviewing somebody else's written code, just stuff like that. Um, you might see something like a comment tag. So this is what it looks like, opening angle bracket, exclamation mark, and uh, then it has two hyphens, we can, we'll just call them that. And then you have your text here, you have another two hyphens and you have a closing angle bracket. So the comment tag is just for writing comments. And these comments are for the user who's looking at your web page that are meant for yourself and you're the developer. Um, so the purpose of it is pretty much anything you want. Uh, you can put any text here you want, and it's pretty much used for like reminders or uh, stating the purpose of something you wrote and then maybe possible ideas as well. And then once again, the user never sees this unless if they go look at your code for the web page. Um, and yeah, it does not display on the web page. So it's just for, for writing useful comments. So maybe uh, you want to use a new tag that you just learned and you want to remember what it is. Maybe you just want to write a comment right below it. So next time you go back and look at your uh, HTML document, you can be reminded of what it is. Or maybe you want to also have timestamps for the last time you worked on something. Just stuff like that. That's what the comment tag's for. And it's commonly used in tutorials for um, stating the purpose of different tags or what's going on with the code. Um, so 
let's pause right here and let's go on to Code Playground. And then we're going to continue on learning about the image tag. That's something else we're learning today. But yeah, so let me open up Solar Code Playground on this page. And we'll continue. So let me make sure we have no questions. Okay, nice. Uh, well, actually, let me make sure we have no questions properly. I believe I need to check here. Okay, so yeah, we're good. So I'm opening up Code Playground right now, and then from there we'll continue writing. So I don't think you guys can see this, so let me share my entire screen, and we'll look there. So I'm sharing. So, okay, so hopefully you guys can see this now. This is Code Playground open. And once again, it's just a place we can quickly write code that we're testing out. So we don't need this either, so let's go like that. So this is our place where we're writing our code. And let's start. So we have that doc type tab I was talking about. When you open up a, like a new file, I guess you could say in Code Playground, it automatically puts some basic tags for you. Um, and you notice how it includes that doc type declaration. So I don't actually think it would be important here. We can probably use it without it, but we're gonna leave it here because once again, it's good practice to include it. So uh, we learned about lists. So first to create a list, let me actually zoom in like that. First to create a list, we use the UL tag. Uh, so opening bracket, UL, and then closing bracket. So that's the opening. And typically what you see people do, since it's like a lot of stuff going into it, they have to create new lines and then put their closing tag like that. Uh, but of course that's optional for you. So closing the UL tag, so it's that forward slash, and then the closing the angle bracket as well. And then now we can put our items in our UL tag. So um, first of all, let's put a just text above this UL tag. We can use the H3 tag to do that. We learned that last cap. That's for creating headings, and then three just get represents the size getting smaller. So uh, yeah, I'll just put this list is going to be grocery items. So grocery list. I don't think I spelled grocery right. Uh, grocery list. That might also be wrong. We're just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, and yeah. So now let's add some items to our list. So I'm going to do the li tag, close it, and we're going to put our first item. Our first item is going to be eggs. So that's one item on our list that's not been created. Let's do one more for now, and we're going to say the next item is going to be uh, milk. Let's leave it like that and just run our work and see the output. Oh, I accidentally tried to save that. Uh, let's see the output. So run. You see our output all the way on the side over here. This is our grocery list. So we see how when it's an unordered list, it just uses bolded DOS like this. Uh, but quickly, I guess we're going to learn another tag, which is the OL tag. So the OL tag pretty much just is an ordered list, uh, as you might have guessed. So the use for or unordered and then the else for list. And in this case, for what we're going to change it to, ordered list, the O's for ordered, and the, the L is still for list. So let's run this again. We're going to change, we're going to see, sorry, how these uh, bulleted dots change to numbers instead. So yeah, now it's numbered. And this all goes in the tags, and then we have our list items over here. So we can probably still get away with this if we didn't have anything surrounding it, but we'll see our output, and we'll see that it's sure it's a list, it's just on brand new lines, but really the list doesn't have anything to show that it's a list. It's not unordered, uh, it doesn't have any points to show that, and it's also not ordered, right? So you probably want to have one of these two around it. So uh, that's creating lists. They can be useful for a lot of stuff. You can do a lot of cool tricks with them, uh, but that's maybe something we'll learn about in the future. But for now, we're just going to leave it at that for list so you can create a list of whatever you want to this grocery list up here that's just uh, me using a different tag but uh, of course you could replace that with anything like h1 plus one so yeah that's just the h1 tag making it bigger because we went from h3 
three just represents it getting smaller, although the number is getting larger. And we have H1, which is heading one. So that is the list tag. So we're actually going to leave this here. We're not going to delete what we've written. But now what I'm going to add is I want maybe the, let's add two more items. Let's add ooh, Apple. And then let's, oh, I'll say apples. And then let's also add um, oranges. So we're going to run this and see the output. Uh, but maybe one is more in demand than the other. This is an unordered list. So uh, first of all, if I want to maybe say one's more in demand, maybe the order of importance for them, I put it in order like this, and then I'd run it. Uh, but maybe I want to keep it unordered. And then I want to say maybe one's more in demand than the other. So maybe next time I go out, maybe if it's not for groceries, I should still try to get one of the items on this list. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is that I'll bold the one I care about most, so maybe milk. So I'm going to use the B tag like this. So opening B tag, it goes around the text, by the way, the opening and closing tag. So what's in between that is the text you want to bold, of course. And I'm going to have my closing one over here like that. And we're going to run it. And now we see our output is bold. So eggs is normal, milk is bolded, apples is back to normal, and orange is back to normal. So that's pretty much those tags working. So that's the B tag. Uh, let's do one more tag. We have the BR tag, right? Uh, so let's put some text down here. So I'm going to say uh, next milk is the most important item on the list that's what our p text and say let's also just move everything to the side here like this uh so pretty much what i'm writing here is that i'm just writing a p tag and i'm just putting the text as milk is the most important item on this list uh, so I'm going to do one more time just to showcase the B tags that we're just going to put it around the text I want to be bolded. So I'm going like this. So uh, let's run this. Let's see the output first of all. So we see grocery list. Milk is the most important item on the list. Sure. But maybe I want after, maybe I want milk to be on a line of own, and I want the rest to be on the other line. Or maybe I want after important, it should create a new line and it should continue on from there. Because uh, maybe I just think it's too much to be saying on one line, right? So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to add my BR tag, just insert it in between anywhere. I could even insert it in between the text if I wanted. Uh, we're going to go like this. BR closing tag. And that's pretty much it. So if we run that, Drag it to see our output. We can see that milk is the most important and it continues on the next time item on our list. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that makes sense so far. Let me check for questions again quickly. Uh, is the Python dev camp rescheduled? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I'm not teaching the Python uh, game dev camp. I did hear about this cancellation. It might be rescheduled, I'm not sure. Probably just for next Saturday again, but once again, I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, so that's the B tag, that's the P tag, or if we already know the P tag, that's the BR tag, that's the um, LI tag, that's, we also learned the OL tag, that's the UL tag, and yeah, so hopefully that's all clear. Once again, these components might look boring right now, but these are like the base components on a web page, and um, they're gonna be really important for the future. So let's learn about another tag now. And yeah, so let me get out of here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second and go on to uh, back to the slide presentation. We'll continue from there. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen again. Okay, I don't think my screen's being shared, but you should be able to see my screen again if it gets added back to the show. Make sure I'm actually sharing it correctly. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen. Uh, and 
and let's just continue from there. So let me go live, make sure you guys can actually. Okay, so you guys can't see my screen. Let me see what I can do about that. Okay, there we go. Now you can see my screen. Um, so yeah, let's continue. So next we're learning about the image tag. Uh, so, so far we've just been able to add a text to our webpage, honestly. Uh, sure, we're doing different forms with like lists and stuff and we're able to bold it, uh, but still it's pretty boring for a page. And a lot of web pages we have, we see, they have videos on it. They have maybe sound on it, of course, just to keep us engaged. I um, mean, they have images as well, of course. So let's learn how to add images to our web page. So to do this, we have a call a tag called IMG. Uh, so this slide kind of skips into it, but the IMG tag, pretty much what it does is that it, um, the IMG tag, it, sorry, I'm having a great part. The IMG tag, it pretty much just defines an image on your HTML document and it does nothing more. With the IMG tag alone, you can add images to your web page because what you might be wondering is, um, how do we actually add the images we want to our page? Um, so to do this, this introduces us to something you called an attribute. Um, so an attribute is, uh, the attribute in this case that we use for the image tag is the SRC attribute. And with it, we're allowed to put the URL to our image, uniform resource locator, uh, location of our image, and we're able to link our image to that tag and have the image load. So this is just a basic introduction, but you're probably going to be confused. Maybe you don't know what a URL is. Maybe you don't really understand attributes too well. We're about to discuss that more. So first of all, let's deal with the word URL. So URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. Um, the easiest way to describe it is an address for where something lives on the World Wide Web, so the internet. Um, and the great analogy for a URL is your own home address. Um, so giving someone your home address allows them to locate and visit you, the same way a URL allows you to locate or visit a web page or image. Um, so you probably send URLs to your friends maybe all the time. Uh, so maybe it's like the YouTube video you found funny, you'd send it to somebody you know. That thing you're sending to them, that link you're sending to them, you also may call it a link, is a URL. So it's the address for where that web page, where that video, where that image exists. So yeah, that's a URL. And if we go back here now, we're passing that URL within our image tag in order to basically say, this is the image we want to load up. Uh, because otherwise, we actually have no way of really doing that, right? We need the address for that image so we can tell uh, we can tell our HTML tag or the HTML document where to go to go get that image we want. Otherwise, they won't know what image we want to load with just the image tag. Um, so yeah. Next, we have attributes. So attributes is what makes things a little bit more complicated, but I think we'll get the hang of it. Uh, so first of all, an attribute defines an additional uh, set of characteristics for an element or, yeah, for an element. Sorry, let me explain that. I didn't explain it too. I'm just going to say the slides. An attribute defines additional characteristics or properties of an element. I said for an element, but pretty much the same thing. Um, so let's talk about attributes in the real world. So an example of an attribute we have in the real world is, uh, for humans, is our eye color. Um, so that's an attribute, so it's an additional characteristic we have. And um, yeah, so we can pass different values with that attribute. Some of us have blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, black eyes, just a lot of different eye colors, right? And yeah, so that's an example of an attribute. So once again, just an additional characteristic, so it's an add-on to like an existing thing already. So in this case, it's the human. So uh, maybe for another thing, like a car, an attribute to a car is this car color, right? Um, and then maybe for an attribute for a shoe is like a shoe size, just a lot of stuff. So it's just additional characteristics. So maybe if you could like imagine um, like a file on somebody, if you like there's a file on somebody, you have like things noted down about them. So maybe you have their age, you have their um, hair color, you have their ethnicity, their background, just stuff like that. Those are attributes of them. There's like additional characteristics you can use to identify them, right? Um, but in this case, we want additional characteristics for an element so we can add more features to it. Um, so uh, here's just a question to get you thinking more about attributes again. So you're planning to buy a painting and to put it up in your bathroom. Uh, what's some things you need to know about the painting before you buy it, right? Um, so the first thing you want to maybe know or something you want to know is its height. 
Um, and that's an attribute we have for the actual image tag. We have the height attribute. And as you can imagine, the value we pass with that, what we give to it is a number, uh, a measurement, a number of measurement, and that defines as height. Uh, so here's an example of it being used. We're gonna be talking about like how we actually assign values to attributes as well in a couple seconds. But yeah, something else you want to assign to it maybe is its width. Um, so the width, same thing, we also have an attribute for it with the image tag and um, we pass the number to it and we give it what it's width is. So hopefully that makes sense. So those are attributes um, and their additional characteristics. In this is case with the uh, painting we're buying, attributes of the painting are also tied in with. And um, yeah. So uh, another attribute you might have thought of, this one wouldn't work in HTML, but uh, maybe its price could also be an attribute because that's something you want to know before you buy. And that's an, also an additional characteristic that would help you make your buying decision if you want it or not. Um, yeah, if it's too expensive, maybe you don't want it. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So height and width are two attributes we can also use on the image tag. We're not going to be using them yet, but we're going to be using them when we should be short showing examples of the image tag. Uh, and that's just within uh, length, basically height. So uh, let's go back to the slide over here and let's look at it again. So we want to add an attribute to our image tag so we can get our image to load. And remember, we want the address for our image and we need an attribute to use to pass that through. So the attribute we want to use with our image tag, the most important one is the SRC attribute. We just pronounce it as source because that's what it's short for. Um, so with T, first of all, with the attribute, this is how it works. So we have our image tag. We have our opening and closing brackets, of course. Then we have the name of our actual element. So in this case, it's image. Then we have our attribute name coming immediately after it. So SRC. And then with our attribute, we need to give it a value, right? If we're even given value to eye color, we're not just going to leave it as eye color. We're going to also pass it to values. So we're going to say eye color equals red, right? Um, so in this case, with the source attribute, we have source. We have our equal sign. And we have opening and or sorry, then we have opening and closing quotations. Uh, so with these, in between them is where we put whatever our value is. And that's just to group it all together. And I'll show you why we need that in order to be like if we didn't have that. Uh, but anyways, we put our address between these quotations and it basically be saying the source is equal to whatever is in the quotation. So if it's an address to a cat image, it's going to be equal to that location of the cat image. Um, so yeah, once again, just to talk about the source attribute. The source attribute is where you put the URL of your image so that the image will appear. Uh, so this right here is just something to note down for a couple seconds. Um, so when an image isn't loaded correctly on like an HTML page, sometimes you might see this icon um, and this icon represents the page not loading incorrectly and maybe like something going wrong or maybe you couldn't find the address for that image. Uh, so there's actually a solution to fix this, maybe not the broken image itself, but to um, have the user not see this, and we're gonna be getting to that later. So that's URL, remember that stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and it's an address for where something lives on the web. Uh, that's attributes, so just an additional characteristic on like a property, or sorry, or property on something. Um, talked about that. Uh, additional characteristics that we can put on the image tag, so other attributes we can use besides SRC is height and width, um, and then, yeah, so let's test this out before we go any further again. So let me stop sharing my screen and share the right tab again. So I need to share code. Oh, sorry, I need to share code playground this time. Share screen. Uh, let me go over here, go like this. So one second, I'm just opening this up like so. Okay. So hopefully, no, that's the wrong page. Mm, okay, I'm just gonna share my entire screen so we don't have to keep doing this. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen again now. Um, so we're back in the code playground and let's write some more code. So we want to create an image tag, right? So open image like that and uh we'll honestly just leave it like that for now we can also put a closing tag but we leave it like this for a second 
So I'm gonna zoom in a bit, make sure we can see that better. I also wanna see if I'm driving further out to the side. So it looks like we're good here. Maybe zoom one out since we can't see too much. So it looks like we're good like this. Um, so we have our doctor declaration, all the other tags, but what we care about is what's in between this body tag, which is the image tag like this. Uh, so that's the image tag, but now we want to give it an image to look at, right? So I'm going to quickly uh, get out a full screen here and we're gonna search up an image. So I want, um, let's go like that. I want an image for maybe a picture of a hot dog. So I'm just gonna search up hot dog. You can get your image however you want. I'm just getting it from Google Images. Um, so I have a picture of a hot dog and we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take this one. No, we're not gonna take this one. We're gonna take this one, okay? Uh, so let's copy this image or we need to copy the address for the image. So usually what you can do on your web browser, uh, you probably had to do this before, but usually what you can do is that uh, when you're like over an image, you can copy the address for the image and you like see a bunch of options when you right click on it. Uh, so we're not doing any of this. What we're doing is that we're copying the image location. If you're on a different web browser like Chrome, I think it says copy image address, uh, but pretty much the same thing. So we wanna copy the image location. So where that image is, if we wanna see that for ourselves, uh, you can press view image, I believe, and it'll open up that image where it belongs. So we can see this link up here and we can see that's where the image is from. So I can also copy this here, link here. This is the location for where that image is. This is the URL for the image. So we're gonna copy that and then we're going to go back to our playground like this. And now we're going to pass it to the image. So how do we do this again? We want to use an attribute called SRC. So that's the attribute now, but now we wanna give it this uh, link we have over here, this link I just pasted in. How do we pass this to the attribute? So like I said earlier, to do this, we'd first add our equal signs, and then now we can put in our link. Uh, but this won't work either. So why won't this work? So now we're saying source equals uh, blah, 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 just this long link, right? But then something you might be wondering is how does the source attribute know where to end? How does it know to um, end after it takes in this link, right? Uh, because after the equal sign, there's also the closing body tag and there's also the closing HTML tag. So how does it know when to stop? Um, well, actually, it doesn't know when to stop. Um, and let's tell it when to stop. So when we want to tell it to stop, we also get to tell it when to start. Um, and that's over here as well. So we put in our open quotation like this. And we also have a closing quotation back here. As you can see, it even changes color to show to find that it's actually working. Uh, so pretty much when it's like this, uh, it knows the start and it also knows the end now. Uh, so if my explanation before wasn't too clear, let me explain that a bit better. Let's go like this. So on a new line, we're just going to imagine as if I already have my image tag here. When I'm doing src equals, uh, if I have a link like this, let's just store in this link. So if I have a link like this, let's just say this was the full link. Let's just imagine it was. This link would actually work. Um, but yeah, if I had the full link like this and I left it like this, right now we're saying source equals blah, 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 blah. And as we know, HTML doesn't just take a line and it takes it as if that line is just a statement by itself. It looks at everything because we can write our tags however we want. We can uh, write it across multiple lines. So when we write source equals blah, 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 it's not only just looking at what after equals on this line, it's looking at everything after equals on all the other lines. So what it sees is that it sees something like this. So it sees source equals HTML, blah, 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 and it sees the body tag and it sees the HTML tag, and it takes that as part of the equals thing, because we could even say that. Um, right now, technically, it's not taking anything because we haven't even put a quotation to show that it should start taking stuff. Um, but yeah, pretty much like this, without a closing quotation, it's taking it as everything else. So to fix this, we want an open and closing quotation, and that makes it so it's neater, and it also knows when to stop. So now it's going to say, okay, this is all we're taking. We're only taking this value in between the quotations. That's what we do with most of the attributes as well. But for now, let's just test this one. So anyways, back to our line or actually let me correct some stuff. I moved the closing body tag and closing HTML tag. So let's just go like that and like that. 
I tried to save it again. Uh, so let's run this and drag it out here. And we see the image of our hot dog has loaded in. Uh, so that's pretty cool, I guess. So we can get images on our web page now. We've got the image of the hot dog loaded. Um, but this image is slightly too big. I want it to be a lot smaller. Um, it takes up too much space on the web page. So how do we fix this? So we can give additional attributes to our image tag. So I'll zoom in again for us uh, like that. And let's give it some additional attributes. So the first thing I want to give it is a height and a width, right? So this attribute is still going to exist here. It's just going to be pushed down here and you won't be able to see it, uh, but it's still there anyways. So I'm going to put a height. So height equals, and I'm going to put open and closing quotations. I can just put this pre-made, right? Because open quotations basically say it starts and ends. So nothing goes in it like that. And then um, I'm also going to put a width. So I'm just going to say width equals open and closing quotations like that as well. So now I can just pass in my numbers here or whatever my values are. Um, and yeah, so first of all, you might see stuff like PX. So you might see a number and you might see PX. Uh, PX is also like a unit of measurement. You can compare it to like centimeters and it's pretty much what's used for like a pix. Uh, it's sort of for pixels and it's like your display. So the amount of pixels, um, this is just saying how many pixels it covers. I don't know the conversion from pixels to centimeters, uh, but something you can probably easily search up. So I'm saying this is in pixels. You can probably also say centimeters or stuff like that, but let's just stick with pixels because that's the most common one used, especially for computers. So we're using, I'll say one, two, three pixels, and also say one, two, three pixels here. So the width and the height, it's basically going to be a square now. It's going to be 123 pixels by 123 pixels. So let's run this. Let's look at our output. Okay, and we see it's exactly that. The image got smaller. If remember before, it was a lot larger, and it's also a square now. And it's 123 pixels by 123 pixels, right? Um, so yeah, that's just using two more additional attributes on top of the image tag. And hopefully that makes sense on what's actually going on here. So uh, that's the image tag. Of course, we can add our other tag while using it. We can have our P tags. We can have all the other tags we're using. But that's just the image tag as well. And we also learned about attributes. Uh, so let's make this clear. Attributes don't only exist for the image tag. The image tag is the only tag that uses attributes. In fact, many other tags use attributes and pretty much every single tag in HTML has actually has access to attributes. Um, there are some attributes that are basically we call them universal attributes, I believe. And pretty much being universal means they can be used on any tag to do because uh, they all serve like the same purpose and they don't do anything too specific with tag. So they're universal and they can be used with any tag. So something like height and width, um, those can't be used on every tag as you can imagine. Uh, Maybe something like color can't be used on every tag. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of attributes in HTML. So maybe we'll show some off later, but for now we're just gonna stick with these three. We're gonna learn one more actually right now anyways. So let's get out full screen here. Let's head back to our presentation. Um, let's continue on. So we can create an even better image tag. Uh, so we can forget about the height and width attributes. Those are just extra stuff. Those don't merely make the tag better. Uh, but we can actually use another attribute to make the image even better, or maybe not the image, but the tag itself and what's going on even better. Um, and this is the alt attribute. So it might be a little bit hard to see. I know it's yellow on white. I'll fix that later. Um, but yeah, so the alt attribute, it's uh, A-L-T, but we pronounce it as alt, and it's also short for alternative. Uh, so the alt attribute makes it so that text appears along the along with the broken image. Remember that broken image I was talking about earlier when I said um, you might see this icon if the image isn't loading correctly? You can't even see my mouse, actually. Let me see if I can get a laser pointer. OK, yeah. So hopefully you can see the laser pointer. I was pointing at stuff with my creature, but you can see it. Uh, but anyways, this thing right over here, remember I was saying that you might see this when an image doesn't load in correctly? Uh, well, the all attribute helps to fix this problem. So it doesn't fix it from having the image not load in, but what it does to fix it is that it, um, what's it called? It at least doesn't show this broken image icon. It shows some text instead. So if the image doesn't load in, instead of seeing this icon, imagine you're a user on a web page and you just see this icon. You might not even know what the icon represents. You might just be a little bit confused of why they have this random icon on the screen. 
Well, instead of seeing that, what the user would see is text, and that text is whatever you want it to say. So supposedly what usually people would put it as is alternative text, um, so what the image was supposed to be. So maybe I had a picture of the moon here and it didn't load in. The user, instead of being confused and seeing this icon, they see a picture of a moon. Or maybe I could also say, error, the image didn't load in, maybe try refreshing. But yeah, it's all, and that's pretty much just how it's used. So I've created an example blog that you guys can look at, and this is using all the tags we've learned so far. Um, this is the link for it. Uh, I can also put it in the chat, actually. So let me do that quickly. Let me copy and paste this. Uh, and also, I'll just open up here as well, right? Uh, so pretty much what this is right here is that it's code for like a sword and volume. You zoom out a bit. Um, so yeah, oh, we turn this into a change challenge link, but pretty much this is code for like a basic web page. Um, this right here doesn't matter too much. You can ignore this a tag. I'll actually just remove it right now, honestly, like that. Um, and pretty much, uh, what this is, is that just code for a basic block and it's using all the tags we learned. So we have the basic tags. We have H3, H1, H2, P tag, image tag, uh, another H3 tag, UL lists, stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure the only tag we're not using is the BR tag and the B tag. So if I wanted, I could just add that right now. But I think you get the point. So these are the tags and these are how they work. Um, I can run this right now if we want to see the output, like so. And we see it's just a basic picture like this. So we have our image, we have some of this, and you just have some information about me. So I recommend you guys try doing something like this as well with all the tags we use. Just maybe. Maybe it doesn't have to be this, but maybe just something to uh, refresh on everything we've learned so far. So as we keep going on throughout these days, you keep testing out what we learned for yourself, just to engrave it in memory and to also get better with using it. And maybe I'll help you think of some ideas on what you want to do with it. So yeah, I created that. You can check that out. Um, I didn't put the link in chat yet. I'll do that right now. So that's the link to it if you want to go and check it out. Let's close this and let's go back here. And yeah, so hopefully that's clear. There's good code behind it. Once again, just the tags we've learned and some notes for the image shock. That's actually pretty much going to wrap up today's camp day. So a little bit shorter. Uh, so first of all, the image element is not the only element that has attributes. We already cleared that up. Um, the P tag has attributes. A lot of other elements have attributes. I can actually probably just prove that to you quickly and search up. So all, or I'm gonna say universal HTML attributes. Okay, so global attributes. We can just see these are just, uh, these are some of them. So ID, length, blah, blah, blah. And then these are ones universal to all elements. But then something like the P tag has its own attributes. So I can say attributes for P tab. Um, so let's see. So they have a line that's an attribute. I think there's probably some other ones. I think this one specifically talks about the line. Let me look over here. Uh, okay, so I guess I can't find any web pages that show it off, but the P tag has also attributes. Um, and yeah, so some elements have their own unique attributes that other elements do not share. In this case, we saw some of the image tag, the SRC attributes used specifically for images. And it'd be weird if we tried using it for something like the P tag, right? Or maybe the BR tag. Um, but yeah, so that pretty much wraps up today's camp day. Hopefully everything made sense and hopefully everything's clear. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. Um, and yeah, so that's day two of learning HTML. So I'll hopefully hear from you guys next time and talk to you guys later. And it was nice talking to you guys.